Hey everyone, so as we mentioned in last class, um, our, what we're going to do this week is we're going to do the same kind of analysis that we did on our data set in OpenRefine, but we are going to do it uh, using Python and Aptana Studio 3. Um, and so uh, to get started on this, we're going to open up our Aptana Studio. Um, you can see I still have my, <clears throat> I'm in my week five folder that I created, my, that I promoted to a project in the last video. Um, and I have this, you know, my, my test here that shows that Python is working okay. Um, I've also moved my a CSV copy of my data set into my project folder. This is just going to make it easier for me to open that file. Um, it's not strictly necessary, but uh, there's no reason not to do it. Um, so that's how we're going to work. Um, so to get started again here, I am going to, again, create a new file from the file menu. Um, and for mine, I'm going to look for, um, I'm look for uh, things that happened in 2008, right? This is just you know, moderately arbitrary um, for these purposes, but, you know, you can imagine how you might do it with something else. I could also look for something in a telephone number. So um, I'm just going to call this regex uh, ctown um, town regex uh, test.py, right? I have to put my py on there so that Aptano Studio knows that what we're talking about is a Python file. Um, and I'm going to get started with my process annotation right away. So these hashtags um, are going to tell um, the computer to ignore what whatever comes after the hashtag on the line. It's um it's how we indicate comments or annotations in Python, um, and so this is going to give us some space to map out what we want to do with this program, which is always a good idea. I strongly this is often referred to as pseudo coding. Um, I strongly strongly recommend it. It's just like writing an outline for a story, right? It helps you keep track of where you're trying to get to. Um, so the first step, as we mentioned in class, is that we're going to open uh, my data file, which I will note the name of here is ctowndata.data.csv. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is locate my data column, which in this case for me I think is going to be one of the date uh, one of the date columns. Uh, I haven't decided which one yet, so one of the things I'm going to have to do is uh, one of the things I can do is kind of use Python to uh, use part of this process to sort of look at the data file. Um, I could of course just open it up in um, in Microsoft Excel here, um, and I think maybe the thing that I want to look at is inspection date. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to locate this column. Um, or actually maybe, yeah, let's go instead. Actually, I'm going to look at the phone column. I'm going to see which ones have a, have a, a 212 area code, um, right? Not a lot of them in here. Again, sort of an arbitrary thing, but, but you know, we're sort of text, testing our regular expression uh, know-how and file creation. So I'm going to look for the phone column. And here we go. Uh, so I'm going to say locate uh, the column with phone number in it. Um, I'm going to use my regex to test whether that column has uh, 212. So if I just look for this, we'll see if that works. And um, I'm going to, whoops, um, create a new column that contains true if 212 is present, false otherwise, uh, and then I'm going to <clears throat> output and I'm going to save a new copy of the file. Save a new copy of the file. The file with new column. So that's that, right? I've kind of <clears throat> written myself a roadmap for what I want to do here. Um, and having done so, um, let's get started. Um, so the very first thing that I should say is that uh, given what we looked at last week, uh, Python and JavaScript and other scripting languages actually differ in a couple of uh, Again, not not actual not they don't differ in the sense of how they actually work, but in, ter in terms of some of the things that they require. So um, one thing is that Python is what we call white space dependent. It actually requires you to format. So if you guys think back to to creating your JSON files and how you could kind of write them however you liked, but then when you put them into that JSON lint interpreter, it kind of indented them and made them all pretty and well formatted so that they were easy to read. So Python, um, in uh, in the idea of I think being a more readable language and in some ways a more accessible language, um, requires that you write things nicely, um, that you sort of lay them out nicely. It actually uses that information to um, 
It actually uses that information to figure out how the code is organized. Um, also, it does not require some of those keywords that we talked about. So for example, if I want to create a new variable um, in Python, all I have to do is write the name of a variable. I do not have to say var, V-A-R, as we discussed in class. So for example, if I want to, um, let's say, um, create something called source file, um, which is going to be my uh, my data file. Um, I just have to say source file. I don't have to say var source file, which is a little weird. And and, uh, and frankly, it's not something I particularly like about Python um, because I find it slightly confusing whether you know it's hard for me to know very clearly whether I created a new variable or whether I'm reusing another one based on the on the code. Um, but fortunately, that's one of the reasons why we have uh, comments. So I'm going to double up here, and so I'll just say here I'm going to say uh, begin program. Um, so I'm going to say source file equals, now, um, what is it that we do? Uh, how do we access a file? Um, we open it. So there is a built-in command in Python that is a file open command. So in order to open our file, we literally type open. Um, and then we're going to, so we can tell from the round parentheses that this is a function. This is a built-in function, uh, right? A built-in method of uh in Python, um, and uh, what I need to pass this, we can see from the parentheses, I need to pass it some arguments, right? I need to tell it what I want it to open, and of course, in this case, we know that the name of our file is ctowndata.csv. Now, we're going to pass it a second argument here, and the second argument is ru. This is just, I'm going to give this to you guys as, as received wisdom. Um, it has to do with how, um, uh, with how different computers write new line characters or carriage returns. And basically Macs and PCs do it differently, so we have to pass in an argument that says anything that looks like a new line character, which of course is invisible to us, um, anything that looks like a new line character, treat as a new line character. Because not only do we want to read in this file, but actually one of the things that happens when we open it and refine is not just that we read it in, um, but that it it breaks it into rows, right? I mean, we actually create individual rows rather than kind of uh, running everything together. And so, again, that's something that happens sort of naturally in our spreadsheet programs in OpenRefine. But here we actually need to be explicit with the program and say, listen, I want you to take that file and I want you to read it in one line at a time using anything that looks like a new line character to break it into rows. Um, so we, we do have to be a little bit more detailed. We're working with a lower level language here. We have to be a little bit more specific about what we ask the computer to do. Um, but that's okay. Um, you'll also notice, for example, that we haven't at this point um, said anything about uh, about what kind of uh, delimiter we might have, right? So we know that when we read it in with something like open refine, it asks us about delimiters. Um, we don't have that happening at this point in this process. We're actually going to do that a little bit later on. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my print statements um, I, I sort of use them as what I as a is a quote unquote debugging tool, right? So I like to I, I like to test early and often. Um, in other words, just to make sure I don't have any errors in my code. There's a there's a heuristic in programming that says that you can't write a program of more than six lines without an error in it. Um, so this is one of the things I want you guys to get used to, which is that you know you're going to have errors in your program. It's okay. It's the same way that you know we end up with spelling mistakes and grammatical errors. It's not the end of the world. It's something you go back and fix. So you know, don't uh, you know, just just be generous with yourselves as you're as you're working through this. Um, things aren't going to go right the first time, and that is frankly exactly as it should be. Um, so here we go. I'm going to go to my debug guy here and say Python run, and looks like everything went okay because Python is, as, as I like to call it, a new news is good news kind of programming language. If it doesn't tell you, you know, if it doesn't start yelling at you that something went wrong, then it means everything went fine. Um, so again, a little different to get used to, um, uh, but, uh, but, you know, handy when you, uh, when you, when you need it. Um, so now the other thing is, so now I'm going to say, um, locate the column with my phone number in it. Um, and I think actually something that I maybe need to do uh, first, right, it's not just that I need to locate that column. Well, let's go ahead and locate that column. So um, it's going to be that I need to locate that column for every row in my data set, right? Um, uh, I, need to locate, I need to locate the column with the phone number in it. Um, and in fact, I might, uh, I'm going to take a look for what that actual column name is in just a moment. 
Um, but basically, you know, the idea is that I don't want to apply my test to just one row. I want to apply it to every row. Um, so if I then take this um, and just kind of step through here and say, okay, for every one, I need to find this row. So the first step is I need the for every row. So here's a handy thing, which is that Python in trying in, is, is actually quite uh, readable as, as sort of as English. So I'm going to say for row in uh, source file. Right, so for every row in a source file that I uh, that I had us read in line by line or row by row, um, the first thing I'm going to do is simply just say, um, uh, and you can see it sort of gave me an error because I hadn't sort of completed my my statement yet. But for row in source file, for now I'm just going to say print row because I just want to see what's in there. Um, so again, we're gonna um, we're just going to run this guy and see what we get. Great, so this actually looks pretty decent in the sense that I uh, appear to have, um, you know, I appear to have read everything incorrectly. Now, one thing I do notice is missing here um, that I don't see is my header row. So I'm actually going to go back um, and take a look for that. I may have to, I may have to save down a new copy of my Ctown data file because without my header row, it's going to be kind of hard to find. Um, I mean, I can obviously see it here. I don't, I suppose, strictly need my header row, but I think it's going to be handy to have in my exported file, in my final file. So I'm going to go check for that, um, create a new copy, and I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so I figured out the problem was that um, I was actually using my uh, original data file that I hadn't removed duplicates from, um, and so I actually had way too much data for um, basically for this little window to show me. Now, I, I, in point of fact, Python is extremely powerful, and I would in no way need to limit my data set, but for the purposes of being able to do this and kind of see what's going on, um, I, I used my deduplicated file, which only had about 70 data rows in it, because um, we can see also that we're getting some wraparound here on our... Um, on our data, which is okay, um, but it just we want to make sure that we can kind of see what's going on. Um, it's going to help us out. So um, I can see that I've got the row, and I can also see that I have um, all of my column names in my first row. So uh, the thing is that what I want to be able to do here is, you know, look at my header row. My header row is not a data row, right? So I'm not going to want to test that for whether or not it has 212 in it because that's meaningless, right? It has the word phone in the phone number column. Um, so I need to figure out which column is my uh, uh, is my header, sorry, I need to figure out which row is my header row, and then I need to figure out which column is my data column. And in order to do that, what I'm going to, I'm going to add something to, um, to my Python here, because right now I can just do, I can only do the same thing to every row, right? I'm printing out every row. But what I want to do is I want to know what number row I'm on at a given time. And so to do that, I can say, okay, I want you to create a row number, um, but for that to work, you're going to have to count the rows in source file. And so this built-in function enumerate is going to give me that. So now I can say print row num row and give this a run. And what I should get hopefully is the number of the column adjacent to it so that I can use that number to say, you know, is this the header row or not the header row. So again, I'm gonna run my debug here and looks pretty good. Ooh, I ended up with a lot more data rows than I thought. Um, but here we go. So we see we have establno, own name, and we also see something interesting, which is that actually the, the quote unquote first row of data actually has a zero beside it. And that's because um, computers start counting at zero, as we discussed in class uh, when we talk about lists, they actually begin counting at zero rather than one. Um, so that's a good thing to know. What this is going to let us do is it's going to say, hey, look, um, you know, if the row is zero, then I don't want you to do anything. Um, but if the row is greater than zero, then I'm going to want you to sort of look at the data in there and do some work on it. Um, so we'll come back in a minute with, uh, with that, the sort of, the sort of rest of that, uh, analysis and see if we can't get this going with our regular expression and create a new file. Uh, so we'll see you just in a moment.